the casing of a centrifugal pump is the enclosure within which the impeller rotates. In axial flow pumps, the casing is simply the pipe within which the impeller rotates. The casing of a radial flow pump can be of two main types. 1. Volute casing type. 2. Diffuser casing type. This is a volute pump casing. This is a diffuser pump casing. The volute casing is the most common type of casing for radial centrifugal pumps. The impeller is mounted in the middle of the volute casing and rotated with close tolerance of the casing's side walls. A volute casing has a volute with a gradually increasing cross-sectional area that wraps around the impeller. The kinetic energy that the impeller adds to the flow is converted into pressure energy within the volute. Next we will see how we can analyze an approximation of the flow within the pump's volute and show how the volute acts to convert the kinetic energy of the flow into higher pressure. According to the continuity equation, in one-dimensional incompressible flow with a single inlet and a single outlet, the flow rate into a given constant control volume is equal to the flow rate out of that control volume. The flow rate in one-dimensional flow is equal to the fluid's velocity times the cross-sectional area that is perpendicular to the flow direction. Making a crude approximation that the volute is a one-dimensional flow channel, then we can see that if the outlet area is larger than the inlet area, then the outlet velocity will be smaller than the inlet velocity. Furthermore, if the inlet and outlet areas are equal, then the inlet velocity will be equal to the outlet velocity. If we then apply Bernoulli's equation to this one-dimensional flow situation, we can see that using the conservation of energy principle, for a frictionless flow, we have the pressure in Pascal S divided by the liquid's density in kilograms per meter cubed plus one-half times the velocity in meters per second squared plus the product of the gravitational acceleration in meters per second squared and the vertical position in meters is equal for both the inlet and the outlet. Assuming that both inlet and outlet are at the same elevation, then the potential energy terms can be dropped. We are left with the shown equation that basically states that the summation of the pressure energy and the kinetic energy of the flow is constant for a one-dimensional, frictionless flow with no change in the elevation. We can rewrite the equation for the outlet pressure to get the shown relationship. Substituting for the outlet velocity, the value we obtained previously from the continuity equation, we get the shown equation. If the inlet and outlet areas are the same, then the area ratio will be equal to 1, and therefore the term within the brackets is equal to 0, which means that the second term on the right is equal to 0, and the inlet and outlet pressures are the same. If the cross-sectional area of the outlet is smaller than the cross-sectional area of the inlet, then the area ratio is larger than 1, and therefore the second term on the right-hand side is negative. This would cause the outlet pressure to be smaller than the inlet pressure. Finally, if the cross-sectional area of the outlet is larger than the cross-sectional area of the inlet, then the area ratio is smaller than 1 and the second term on the right-hand side is positive. This would cause the outlet pressure to be larger than the inlet pressure. This last situation is what occurs within a volute pump, whereas the cross-sectional area of the volute increases, the fluid's pressure increases as the kinetic energy of the flow is transformed into higher pressure. The analysis that was performed here is of course an approximation since the flow within the volute is neither one-dimensional nor frictionless.
At the design capacity, the pressure surrounding the impeller of a single volute pump is nearly uniform. A small net radial thrust force acts on the impeller. At operating capacities that are lower than the design capacity, the pressure surrounding the impeller is not uniform. This causes a large net thrust force to act on the impeller in the radial direction. The magnitude of the net radial thrust force increases with the total pumping head and with the width and diameter of the impeller. This follows from the well-known relationship of force and pressure. Where the force in Newton is equal to the pressure in Newton per meter squared times the area in meters squared. As can be seen from the equation, for the same percent unbalance in the pressure around the impeller. The higher the pumping pressure, the higher the net force. Furthermore, a larger impeller that is thicker or has a larger diameter offers a larger surface area for the unbalanced pressure to act upon, hence increasing the net radial thrust force. If the pump operates for a long time under conditions of much lower capacity than the design value, the shaft of the pump can be broken due to fatigue loading caused by the unbalanced radial thrust force. There are four main types of volute casing designs. The T, or tight cut water type, which is also known as the volute or true volute type, has a volute shape with a very small clearance between the impeller and the volute's cut water. The cut water is the point next to the pump's exit where the impeller is closest to the casing. This type of casing tends to have the highest efficiency, but has the lowest wear resistance. It is primarily used for pumping liquids with little or no solids content. The C, or conventional type, which is also known as the semi-volute type, also has a volute, but with a much larger clearance between the impeller and volute at the cut water. In the A, or annular type, the clearance between the impeller and the casing is constant all around the casing, except at the pump's exit section. The OB, or oddball type, which is also known as the extended neck type, looks almost the same as the annular type. Except for an extended neck that is designed to reduce recirculation-induced wear at the tongue area. This casing type has the highest wear resistance of all four casing types. And the lowest efficiency. It is thus recommended for applications involving slurries.